Let's play one more piece of sound. I just want to do number four uh, because Killer Mike just keeps showing up uh, and has an incredible way of campaigning for Bernie Sanders, but really also just historicizing things. That's one of the, I mean, honestly, I mean, Killer Mike is one of the best popular historicizers we have. And historicizing is the core of the project. And I'm also really happy on this stage here, I believe this is in, this is in North Carolina, Greensboro, North Carolina. You have Bernie Sanders, Danny Glover, Adolph Reed back on tour, which I'm incredibly excited about, the great Adolph Reed. Everybody needs to read Adolph Reed, particularly in these, um, this present context. And then Ben Cohen and Cornell West. Uh, Frank, I mean, look, uh, Bernie has the best people. He really does. He really does. He absolutely does. Um, and this is Killer Mike. Let's just, let's just uh, actually. Danny said, DeVito. Danny DeVito's great. Yeah. Danny DeVito, Brianna Joy Gray, Shailene. Shailene. He's got the people who are legit committed. This is Killer Mike. You hear me? 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 They First fix it all, if you're watching it. Let's just acknowledge that young lady. She was here. She was heard. We appreciate you. Sorry, we couldn't answer to Donald Trump being the devil, but it's, a, but it's a lot of devils out there, but the Lord knows we are here to stomp the devil and shout the day. Now, I'm glad, I'm glad they let me go before Nina and Cornell, because, whoo, they can speak. I just want to say one of my favorite writers growing up was a man named James Baldwin. And I remember Baldwin saying, you ask my father to wait, my brother to wait, my uncle to wait, how long must I wait on freedom? How long must I wait on rights and equality and liberty? And as a black child, that resonated with me because I knew I had been denied, my father had been denied, my grandfather had been denied, and I personalized that. But as I grew, I started to understand poor white people have been denied, women have been denied, gays and lesbians, transgender people have been denied. Everybody... Immigrant children been denied. Everybody outside of that 1% has been denied. So I want you to take a few seconds to like they do in the black church, look to your left and look to your right. Say the time is now. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, the time is now. There are more of us. There are more of us. We're stronger. We will wait no longer. The time is now. When, when you go to that booth next year, I need you to carry in that booth the memory of this room. Black, white, straight, gay, men, female. We are together. We are united. Our time is right now. We will not wait four more years. Trump, we will President not Obama. wait 20 more years. God, we will oh, not crazy. wait two more presidents. We will not wait three more presidents. This is the president, the next president of the United States of America. The time is now. The time is not in the future. The time is not some abstract time. The time is not something that might be. The time ain't something that could be. The time ain't nothing that should be, that would be. When I say the time, say now. The time is. The time is. The time is. It ain't tomorrow. It ain't the day after. It ain't coming next week. The time is. The time is. It ain't next year. It ain't just next election. The time is. The time is. Senator Bernard Sanders will be the next president of the United States of America. Thank you all. I Don't, can't. Yeah, go ahead. I can't wait for Samantha B and Jen Kirkman to share a jail cell too. <laughs> <laughs> the time is now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to a whole bunch of bullshit. Don't get lost in all the toxicity and the lies and all the disingenuous nonsense. We'll fight back against it. But also, don't be a friggin' nerd. Don't squander this. Don't overthink it. That's the election. 
And it's that historicizing and that expansion of empathy and liberation. That's the politics. And ultimately that is because we do need unity. We do need cross boundary politics. We do need that shared and actual material solidarity. And Mike, that's amazing. I mean, I almost teared up when I first saw that. It's no joke. I'm sure you've talked about this before, but it does feel like sometimes I, identity politics can be a little bit like divisive. And I feel like we can still acknowledge our privilege, but want everybody to, I don't know, want to build something that's inclusive for everybody and not, uh, I don't know, be competitive about it. You know what I mean? Does I mean, I sense? think that there's Except, a different, I mean, I think that there are so many different versions of that term and clearly it's deployed in neoliberal context and arguments to destroy solidarity. Right. And honestly, and even beyond that, like, you know, there's also Mark Blythe made this, but like the even, you know, you know, he made that great joke. He said, okay, I'm like an affluent privileged 50 something white male. I acknowledge my privilege. Can I keep my money? Mm -hmm. What's so incredible about how cynical these arguments have become is that not only do they cheapen the urgent fight for the rights and equity of everybody across every single line, but they've actually are deployed to undermine the material dimension. Like if you're fighting Bernie Sanders' agenda, you are fighting the biggest uh, redistribution and restitution of wealth that was stolen from people of, con of color, uh, at least since Reconstruction. Yeah, because of how racialized these these things are. So my my thing that I did in my book is I think, you know, you can't like identity obviously matters, and then on the other hand, the deployment of how identity is working in neoliberal and conservative politics is incredibly toxic and destructive right, right, and right. undermining of politics. So what we need is, again, we actually need some form of cosmopolitanism, like. You need a genuinely global politics. You need to root it in sources from across the world in shared political struggle and, and, and resource. That's like, that's like my perspective, right? Like you look at someone like Bill Fletcher Jr. can move seamlessly um, between Marxism and then like specific expressions of Marxism in as an example, like African context. But look, I mean, a lot of like, yeah, a lot of what, I mean, I don't know if divisive is the word I use, but I think that what is primarily represented as quote unquote identity politics in today's politics is, is, a, is a, I mean, it's just, it's, it's not good and it will fail. Yeah. And, I, and again, I also think, you know, and starting, you know, and then the most toxic quote unquote identity politics of all is Trump, yeah. is white identity politics. We need something that's deeper and it doesn't, and the, the distinction though is that I like Killer Mike is talking about a real solidarity that's right. rooted in real common interest and understands the history of all these different struggles in terms of gender and race. It's not the Obama thing, which is the kind of like, oh, hey, we're all in this together. Mm -hmm. So let's skip everything. It's like a right, pre right, right, and right. a post critique. You know, like I listen to people, uh, there's all these things that are worth critiquing in popular quote unquote liberal and left culture that are toxic, that are stupid, that are counterproductive, that are not strategic. I critique them a lot, but it's a post, right? You know, the right wing critique is like the pre, right? Oh, racism doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. It's divisive to talk about police murders of black people, right? So I think from the right perspective that Mike's coming forward though, it's like, yeah. And that's and that's also that's Adolf Reed. That's anti-essentialism. Because it seems like what Mike is saying is going to do the most good for the most people. And it will. And yeah. that's the other. But that's the other distinction in the argument. Like the other distinction, and it's it's way more justifiable. But a lot of arguments from, you know, centrist democratic ones to obviously right wing ones still have, you know, deserving and undeserving poor. Mm -hmm. You know, you see some people mm -hmm. flipping that rhetoric, like, oh, like look at these fucking white people in Appalachia or whatever. You know. No, nobody deserves to be poor, period. Nobody deserves to not have a home or health care or food or housing, or, you know, period. By the way, even if they're assholes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah. You know, and it's it just, you see a lot that, a lot of what people, like, 
you look at Bernie Sanders versus Hillary Clinton, right? right? And you can see how Hillary Clinton's politics were not something that were fair, like going to be very emancipatory, but because they were hiring consultants that were fresh out of, basically what I'm saying is like, there's a version of identity politics, or I don't even know if that's the best term to use for it, but it's sort of like upper middle class um, signaling and like manners, right? And that is what becomes a little bit confusing for people because you have consultants who are able to put out a press release by a Hillary Clinton campaign, right? And it hits all of the specific words that people want to hear. But then you look at the policies and there's nothing when it comes to actually helping people. Yeah. And you see Bernie Sanders' right. movement. He's going across the country and he's doing events like this. You know, he was also just visiting the Comanche Nation. That's and right. the chairman of the Comanche Nation said that no presidential candidate has come to visit them since Teddy Roosevelt. Right. So you want to talk about, you know, inclusivity and building um, for people across the board. That's the kind of thing that Bernie Sanders is doing is really building um, bridges between people and building a movement that includes so many different people because we can recognize that we do share a common interest while also recognizing that there are specificities to certain people's uh, issues and plights. And that's why you need as much representation as possible. That's 100 yeah. percent right. And But then well, that leads to the third point, which is Adolf Reed and Hassad Haider make this point, which is like. And the way that you're going to actually get more people to be like genuine partners and, you know, I'll actually say comrades in this context, I hate the word allies, is by actually doing stuff together. And that's another incredible part of like how failed all the woke discourse is because it's like it's either like social media lectures or designed for like private consulting programs. Right. But like when you're actually engaged, this was the point of Hyder's book. And I think he did a good job of synthesizing these things. But it was like part of what actually does happen in actual movements and participation together is people do start to actually get outside of themselves and understand a broader set of struggles and solidarity. But it also has to come, at least for most people. I think, you know, most people outside of the middle class, upper middle class, it comes through like, actual participation. I mean, again, you know, most people really just don't have the time to be like, you know, in these spaces thinking about it one way or another. They need to like, the things that are happening are in like the fight for 15. And then that spills out. It happens in Black Lives Matter. It happens in these real action, it happens in the Sanders campaign. So I think that's the other component of it too. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS. Thanks.